Hello and welcome. So from the day I ordered this motorcycle, I knew I'd have to do the braking in or running in, but I referred to it as braking in for the rest of this video. You see, this motorcycle had only its pre-delivery inspection mileage on it when it was delivered to my door by van. It wasn't going to be a matter of just getting kitted up and riding it normally and enjoying the experience. Oh no, you can't just go and test your 0 to 60 or your top speed runs or your lean angles on a brand new motorcycle with just delivery miles. So today I'll be discussing the first 600 miles and why it's important to the motorcycle that this is done in a specific way and some of the things I found out along the way. If you've never had a new motorcycle or want to know what to do with your new CF Moto 650 MT and you wonder what you needed to do, stay tuned. So let's just roll the intro. Just to be boring and do something many of us don't do, except as a last resort, you need to refer to the manufacturer's or owner's manual. The reason you need to check the manual when you get a brand new motorcycle is to see the braking in instructions. These do vary from manufacturer and engine size. Breaking in a motorcycle engine is a crucial step in the overall maintenance process and can greatly impact the durability and performance of your bike's engine. You need to know the recommended RPMs, oil change intervals and more. Hence why, with most new motorcycle engines, the first 600 miles or 1000 kilometers matters greatly. This procedure hasn't really changed in decades. Introducing Granny Margaret, the infamous Granny, responsible for the stealing of the golden trainers. What if you ride and demonstrate a motorcycle? We are not told to keep the engines in any specific ranges. I will cover that shortly. Breaking in this engine is a two phase process. Phase one of the braking process for the CF Moto 650 engine requires you to do the first 500 kilometers or 320 miles at no more than 4000 RPM, according to the manufacturer's maintenance manual and owner's manual. This means when you're riding it, could feel pretty limited on an engine that redlines at 10,000 RPM. Actually riding the bike and using the low down torque is quite entertaining. It means you try to ride in a style or adopt a style that allows you to maintain speeds through corners. And changing gears on short shifts does feel a little strange to begin with, but you do get used to it slowly. The CF Moto 650 MT tops out to not too poor 54 miles per hour at 3000 RPM in sixth gear. But imagine this on a 125cc, you may only get 20 miles an hour. Top speed. I found that sticking mainly to the city streets and B roads made for a more pleasant experience due to the limited top speed. Also, this allows you not to hold the engine at one constant RPM, which is better for the engine while braking in. Phase 2 of the process can begin once the 320 miles or 500 kilometers is completed. You can open the engine up a little more. No, you still can't accelerate hard or use the full rev range. 6,000 RPM is now your gear change limit. This is 50% of the rev range. Now you can get speeds that you can do on motorways and dual carriageways, around 70 miles an hour, or just a little over. And that makes for doing the next 300 miles far easier because you can cover the ground quicker. You may have seen last week's video where I went to the seaside. Not the most interesting roads anymore, but much quicker roads than I have been using. So making sure to vary the revs, covering 200 miles in one ride, sure put a dent in those 300 miles required. You obviously don't have to do all the miles in a few days or weeks. You can take your time over it. There's a reason why I want it done quickly. I'll share that with you later. So when those pesky 600 miles are ticked off, can you then give it the beans? No, you still cannot, even if it's tempting you. Either you need to do the first service at the dealership or yourself. This might avoid the warranty, so I don't recommend it. Once that service and checks have been carried out, then you can play and use all the rev range. Now back to how the dealers break in their demo fleet. As I said, I would cover this later on. Motorcycle dealers have a different way, I'm told, of breaking in their demo bikes engine, where they will heat cycle the engine. I don't know the exact method used by any dealer, but here's an example method. The engine is started and run for 10 minutes, followed by a 10 minute cool down period. The process is repeated a total of three times. That makes for a 60 minute process with 30 minutes of runtime. Cycling the engine with 10 minute cooldowns keeps the oil temperatures low and slows down the bedding of engine components. From what I've been told, this improves performance but not longevity. I'm not sure whether this is true or not, so if you do know, let me know in the comments. 
I have driven cars where the engine management system restricts what you can do before it has passed all the mileage and service requirements. The CF Moto 650 does not have this built in, which means you do have to have your eye on the rev counter a little more than usual. What did you learn about the bike itself and 600 miles? I'd say it would be unfair to do a full first impressions video, as I couldn't use the full power. So I will do one, maybe a couple of weeks time as I'm off on a solo tour as this video goes live. So keep an eye out in case you see me wandering around towards the north of the country. Breaking in the engine wasn't as tedious as the two I have previously done, simply because it could cover the miles faster. 600 miles on 125 seemed to take an eternity. Let's cover the basics that I did find out about this motorcycle. The actual bike is very good ergonomically and the engine is very good low down the rev range. The gearbox goes into all the gears easily and neutral is indeed easy to find. Sometimes when slowing down I find I cannot change down another gear without partially releasing the clutch. But I've had this on other motorcycles and I think it's me rather than a bike floor. The engine does have its own character. How much of that is due to braking in and not being in the correct gear for the rev range for said speed, I'll find out soon, as I can ride it normally now. The controls are all perfectly placed. The throttle and the handlebars are not too wide or too narrow. I would say the side stand is a centimetre or two too long and the foot pegs can get in the way of you putting down your feet. It's probably the first bike I've ever had that I can change gear lifting my left foot off the floor at a junction. Note, it's not every time, just once in a while. The dashboard may require you to manually alter the brightness in bright sunlight. And even on the brightest settings during a heatwave, you might not be able to read all of it in direct sunlight, but the speed was readable. There are three different displays available. Two from the button on the left, handlebar, control, sport and eco. And the navigation screen, which appears when using the app for navigation. The app has some surprises in store for you once you bind it to your motorcycle but I will cover only a few now. Built-in navigation app from the phone to bike screen. It has some nuances that could be improved upon. Note, I'd avoid using this while breaking in your engine as there is no rev counter. Bike tracker with geofence functionality built in, so you can find it or park up with some sense of security. I'd still lock it to something personally. The app has some other interesting features to be discovered in another video. In summary, it's been a fun 600 miles. Breaking in an engine can be tedious and time consuming, but actually on a 650cc it's been reasonably enjoyable. I can understand why people hire professionals to do this for them, it's not the most fun part of motorcycle ownership. I have ridden some routes while breaking it in I wouldn't probably have got to, and enjoyed the views on my travels. This motorcycle has more features than bikes 3 or 4,000 pounds more expensive, but it is also missing some of the features as well. The bike hasn't had no malfunctions or reliability issues during the breaking in period. Is this motorcycle better than others I've ridden recently? Yes and no, but I don't want to go into that too much detail today. I will do a first impressions video and go over some of the points in that in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And leave a comment below with your thoughts or questions about the CF Moto 650 MT. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Blue Hippo Moto channel for more motorcycle reviews and experiences. Thank you for watching.